The next psalm that I want to think about is from book two of the psalms, right at the beginning of book two, Psalm 42. Again, a fairly well-known psalm, often well-known because of the hymn, as the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs for you. I'm going to read some of the verses of that psalm first. Beginning at verse 1, As a deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and behold the face of God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me continually, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I went with the throng, and led them in the procession to the house of God, with glad shouts and songs of thanksgiving, a multitude-keeping festival. Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my help and my God. My soul is cast down within me, therefore I remember you, from the land of Jordan and of Hermon, from Mount Mitzar, deep calls to deep, all the thunder of your cataracts, all your waves and your billows have gone over me. By day the Lord commands his steadfast love, and at night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. That's verses 1 to 8. There's not too much more of it, and it's worth having a look, obviously, at the whole psalm. It was written by the elaborately named Sons of Korah. Korah was a Levite who led a rebellion against Moses, but his descendants, his sons, remained faithful to God, continued to follow him. But this psalm shows that life wasn't always easy for them. Life wasn't always perfect. This psalm contains real depths of despair at times, real places where God seems absent, where the person is longing for God. And sometimes our lives are very much like that. We can long for God, but not sense him there anywhere. Mother Teresa famously talked about looking for God and failing to find him so often in her life. Yet she remained faithful, just as the psalmist does here, remaining faithful, hoping in God. And sometimes that's a choice we make. Sometimes we can choose to turn back to God. We can allow anger, we can allow problems, we can allow all kinds of things to interfere with our relationship with him. Or we can choose to hope. We can choose to follow the leader of our life. We can choose to follow the source of true life, the source of true peace. Sometimes we just need to open ourselves up to God, and often we're not prepared to do that. It's not easy to do. We're used to being fairly self-sufficient. We're used to relying on what we can do for ourselves. We're used to being told not to bother other people looking for help. Well, that isn't the instruction from the Bible. The instruction from the Bible is turn to God. He's strong enough for all of us. He's strong enough for us to cast all of our cares and our worries upon. He is the living water. The prophet Jeremiah talks twice of God as the living water in chapter 2 and chapter 17, both verse 13. God is the living water. And Jesus, in his words to the woman at the well, again from the Gospel of John, chapter 4, verse 10, says, Look for the living water. If you listen to the one who's offering living water, if you turn to the one who's offering living water, you'll know real peace. You'll know real life. You will know God is with you always. And so let's long for the living water. Let's thirst, knowing that our thirst can and will be satisfied by God.